Coming up, handmade rug expert and author Kayvon Sadrabadi gives a weaver's perspective on the art of oriental rugs. Presented by the place where knowledge and quality matter, the Rug Rack and Home Decor, serving Chattanooga, Tennessee and the surrounding area since 2000. My name is Miriam Thompson and welcome to the Rug Rack and Home Decor. I'm the co-owner and tonight we are so grateful that we have a gentleman named Kayvon Sadrabadi to uh, speak on the Persian rug weaves. There's a couple of people that I do want to introduce. This is my daughter, Katie Thompson. She's my uh, right arm here at the store. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge my sister-in-law, Nancy Thompson, for coming out and helping, and my daughter, Lacey Musser. And uh, just thank you all so much for coming, and I hope you enjoy this. I look forward to hearing Kayvon speak myself. Kayvon is also looking forward to hearing himself <laughs> speak. <laughs> Uh, thank you all very much for coming. I want to thank Miriam Thompson and, and, and Katie for, and the Rug Rack folks for putting this together. Um, I'll give you a, my name is, as she said, Kayvon Sadrabadi. I'll give you a little background about myself. I was originally born in Iran. Uh, about 41 years ago, I came to the United States. Uh, I've been in uh, Chattanooga for about uh, 30, 38 years. Um, I actually went to UTC. I went to school UTC, and while I was going to school, I worked at an Oriental rug store. It was called Masoud's Persian Corner, for those of you who've been around uh, here a lo uh, long time. Uh, and I worked there for about 12, 13 years, and I sort of fell in love with rugs. Uh, I learned from buying to selling to cleaning to repairing, anything that had to do with rugs. And so while I went and started working in an insurance company for the next 20 years, I continued to do the rugs on the side. Um, about three years ago, um, I, uh, it was time, as, as you all know, in corporate America these days, when you're at a certain age in the salary range, it's time for you to move on. Uh, three years ago, that was my opportunity. And uh, so I, what I did was I wanted to figure out a way to give back to this culture. Uh, the Iranian culture has been around for thousands of years. Um, unfortunately, for the past 30 or 40 years, what you see on TV is not a true reflection of the Iranian people or the cu culture itself. Um, rug industry has been around for thousands of years in Iran. Iranians, when, when they use rugs, it's really not necessarily a luxury. It's, it's a way of living. It's what they use to protect themselves on the floor. That's what they live with, with rugs. And that's what we do. Um, unfortunately, this, this industry is dying. Uh, there are many reasons. There are economical, political reasons. Uh, but it is dying, and, and one, of the, one of the biggest reasons was because of some challenges with, with there was a war and there's some embargoes and political things, uh, there was a void in the market where you know, rugs from Iran could not be exported overseas. So countries like uh, China, India, uh, Pakistan, they, they borrowed the Persian designs and they began weaving. They're very industrious, that's, you know, uh, which was great. Uh, However, what they did was they flooded the market, and over time, there's been less and less demand for Persian rugs. And so, again, with, with the embargoes, continuous embargoes, there's, there's a lot of Persian rugs outside of Iran today, but, but in itself in Iran, because of economics and all of that, it's slowly dying. So I, I wanted to figure out a way to give back to the culture. So what can I do? I wanted to use my knowledge. One of the challenges is that, um, it is difficult to distinguish for, for, for average people, whether it's a Persian rug or an Indian rug or made in China or whatever. And there, unfortunately, there were people that took liberties and, and sold rugs that were not actually made in Iran, but they were portrayed as Persian because the design was Persian. It's true, the design was Persian. So anyway, so I wanted to, there are many books that are written on uh, uh, rugs, Persian rugs, but they mainly talk about the designs, colors, and history. The one area which actually all the experts use to figure out how a rug is, where the rug was made, is the weave which is on the back of the rug. It's very complicated and complex to explain, and there aren't many books on that at all. So I decided to, why not, I'll do that. So I spent the past three years, I've done research. Uh, I've done two things. One is I've, I've created a um, free online resource. It's the website at the bottom of the handout that you have. Uh, if you spend a couple hours uh, using videos, text, and, and, and pictures, 
I'll show you exactly how, how a rug is made in Iran. Um, and then also, I, I made a book that it talks about weave. Uh, we'll talk about the weave. It's, it's, it's rather complex uh, uh, subject. So, you know, 20, 30 minutes we're going to spend together is not going to give it all. Uh, but I did write a book. And then one of the other things that I did, which I thought was important, was I have created, I've included 750 pictures of about 170 different weaving regions of samples so that people can see what the differences are. Because, you know, when you go somewhere and they say, okay, this is made in Kashan, uh, if you're with a reputable dealer, like folks at Rug Rack here, you can trust them. But there are other people who fly by night to other places that you may not know. But anyway, so that's what I've done. I'll get started by talking about, in Iran, there are three types of weavers. There are tribal weavers, there are villages, village weavers and uh, their city. The tribal weavers, they, they literally, what, what they weave is for their own use. Uh, it's, it's, it's the material that they have is what they have access to and they weave whatever they need and then if they have any extras, then they can sell and make some extra money. Uh, the, the, the weavers in the villages, it's sort of that's how their way, they, they supplement their income, their family income. Kids help. And, and this is not, when I say kids help, this is not about child labor or anything like that. Just kids are growing up doing it as they get older. Um, and they help supplement the income. So they, they do sell, they make it to sell, and then maybe some for themselves. And then you talk about the city uh, uh, weavers, which is, you know, really they work on commission, really bigger pieces, more intricate uh, pieces, more designs, more, more colors. Uh, so if you look at it from, from a how sophisticated the weaving is or the techniques from a tribal one to this more simple more easier to do uh, to the city ones that are very complicated and you can see very complex weaves and all that so I'm gonna jump back and forth uh, I'm gonna try to explain things it's kind of difficult to figure out what's the best way to go through it so I'm gonna do what I think is best uh, this is a loom this is any rug that's woven it is critical for the warps which is these are the warps that are going up and down to have tension. If they don't have proper tension, then the rugs get crooked and there's a lot of issues. So, so you have a loom and this loom has um, the, the critical parts that it has is, first of all, it's very sturdy. It has this fixed beam, which is st st stays sturdy. And then this is a flexible beam. If you notice this one with the screws that are here, I can push it up or down, which will create tension. Now, there are different types of we, uh, looms and there are different ways of doing it, but the concept, what I want you to walk away with is that you need a way to put tension on the warp, okay? So this one in particular, this is uh, what you see when you look at a rug, any rug that you see the fringe, you see the fringe on the bottom of this rug, this fringe actually runs all the way through and comes out the other end. So when you see this part of right here, the warp goes up and down and depending on what the design is, how many knots you're going to have in, 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 the, in the width, that's how many warps you're going to have. And, and down here, when the rug is finished, this will be cut off and that will become the fringe. So on machine-made rugs, there is, the fringe is sewed on. But on handmade rugs, the fringe that you see on one end, it runs all the way across to the other side. So they, and the easiest way that I can say about uh, what does the foundation of a rug look like? If you imagine a, a piece of burlap, the idea is that there's, there's yarn that goes up and down and the yarn that goes horizontally. The ones that go up and down vertically are called warps. The ones that go horizontally are called wefts. If you were to add tie knots and add knots in the, between each row on a burlap, you actually have a rug. So how a rug is woven is they put the warp up and then they begin to tie knots one row at a time. Once they finish the knots on one row, then weft is added, and, and then it's beaten down, and then they go to the next row and, and all of that. Now, as we go through, I, I'll give you more detail about what's going on. So um, one of the main critical parts of a loom is this, what's called a heddle stick. What you want to be with that crisscrossing, that intertwining that you see in a burlap, where it goes up and down, this heddle stick actually provides that, faci facilitates that, where it goes up and down each row. One row it's up, the weft is added, then it comes down, and then the other weft is added. So each one is the crisscross. If you have any questions at the end, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. 
if you want to see closer and all that, again, everything is on that website for free. You can see it. So don't, you know, just, just think about the concept. So that's how the rug is woven. It goes one, one row at a time, each row that goes all the way up on top until it's finished, and then they cut it off, and then, of course, it's taken off the loom and, and trimmed. Um, let's talk about the materials. Uh, there are four major materials that are used in, in Persian rugs. Um, there's wool, there is cotton, there's silk, and then sometimes hair. Now, one thing going back to the loom, I'm sorry. If the, the tribal weavers, the looms that they have are more basic, meaning that they need to have something they can wrap up, fold, and in the spring or in the fall to move forward. So they don't have anything heavy duty like this. They may be using branches or something like that. Some of them have looms that are on the ground, actually. They're uh, the horizontal looms on the floor that they can sit on top and they weave. So their looms are not very complicated at all. And then this, uh, when you go to the villages, they have more something like this that's a little more sturdy that can fit in, a, in, they can fit in bigger in their room or outside somewhere. And then the city ones have any size that you want. They use metal and all that, they're really sturdy looms. Materials. One of the key things is, is wool. Obviously, the majority of the rugs are made of wool. Some are made of cotton. Now, majority of the rugs that you see in villages and cities, the foundation, which is the warp, is made of cotton. Tribal rugs, they don't really have access to cotton. So what they do is they use wool as part of their foundation because they have sh uh, uh, herds of sheep and they use the wool that they have uh, accessible to them. Now, please know that most everything that I say, there is an exception. Um, you know, travel rugs may have access to buy some cotton and all that, but typically in the past, that's what they used. Um, one of the key differences with Persian rugs is that the sheep, the herds of sheep, are raised for the, in, for, for, for the wool itself, not for the slaughtering of the sheep and the meat. So they let the hair get as long as it can, and they just shear it every year, and the sheep go on and play around until next year, then they shear it again. I don't know if they do it once or twice a year. So, so the wool itself is what they call live wool. It has a luster. It's very long staples, so the, the wool itself has a luxurious, because it has, has a different sheen to it. Other places that they have, they use the sheep for slaughter, and once it's done, they take the hide, they treat it with chemicals, and, and then they, the wool comes off, and then that's more of it, what they call a dead wool. It's not as lustrous and all that. So, so one of the reasons that the Persian rugs look so beautiful is one of it is, is the material that they use, that it's, it's the wool itself. So again, and then cotton, they have cotton fields that they use. And then silk, silk of course is uh, very expensive. Uh, it's only used in, mainly in city rugs actually, to be honest with you, because it's, those are the people that commission for much higher uh, expensive things. Uh, and they're used for mostly very intricate designs. And then hair, again, some villages or travel rugs, they have hair, access to goat hair or camel hair or something like that that they use. Dyes. What's interesting about dyes is traditionally uh, vegetable dyes are always the best. Um, one of the things about some of the rugs, especially rugs from Iran that are 100, 200 years old, they, they wear so beautifully, the colors so muted, so nice and beautiful because it was vegetable dyes. Different areas have different access to different dyes, so the colors are different. Uh, there's, sometimes you can recognize where the rug was made because sometimes some areas, the shade of red that they use is more of a yellow red. Some of the areas use more bluish red. So you can tell, okay, this is a Kerman is more bluish red. Kashan is more of a yellowish red. Uh, but then also for the past 100, 150 years, chemical dyes have been used. Uh, some people somewhere you read and they sort of steer you away about chemical dyes. These days, there's really is nothing wrong with chemical dyes. If it's done well and used well, it's, it's just fine. But vegetable dyes are typically are better. I, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've been in this business for a long time. I can't tell the difference to be, I mean, unless you do some chemical processes, it's very difficult to tell that, okay, this is a vegetable dye. So that's a tough one. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is tools. So how are the rugs woven using the tools? If you look at your package, the second page, this is a knife tool. Do you see the picture of it? It has a little hook on top of it that's used and that hook is used to go behind the warp and it uses the material. Just this is how they use to tie a knot. 
And then when they finish, there's a sharp end right here. It cuts off, OK? There are two types of knot, which we'll talk about in just a second. One is a Turkish knot. One is a uh, Persian knot. The Persian knot is tied by hand. So they tie it by hand, but they have a little knife, and they cut. The Turkish knot, you need this tool to use it to do that. So that's one tool. The second tool that they use is this comb-looking thing right here. So what they do is, after a row of knots has been woven, what they do is they use this little hook thing that I've shown you. This is something I made. It's nothing fancy. There are different ways of doing it. But it allows you to pull the weft through. So this is a weft, and it's pulled across. You see this? This comes across like this. And then what they do is they use this comb to tamp it down. Now, you may see some rugs that have a little bit of a curve on the edge or something. What that means is that they pulled a little tightly here, and they didn't have enough room as they combed. The kind of rug kind of pulled itself together. So there's a lot of art that goes into it. So that's the, so you have the knife to tie the knots. You have this little tool to pull the weft through, and then you use the comb to beat it down. And then, at the end, you have the scissors, which allows you to shear. It has a, it has a little curve to it so that you can shear easily like this. You see, if, if it was a flat, you would not be able to do that. So that's what they do. So you have the picture in front of you that you can see. Now, most everybody uses the same type of tool. There's no, I haven't seen many very vari fancy variations of, of different ones. Now, some areas, what they do is that they add weight to this. Because I am strong enough to tamp it hard. But what they do is they, they, do the, they add weight. So when you lift it and it comes down, it puts an even amount of pressure every time. When, you, when they let go, they don't have to depend on if you're tired this morning or if you're angry this morning, it's just, so you just, they just let it go and it puts an even pressure going back and forth. Uh, knots. There are two types of knots, as I said. One is a Persian knot and one is a Turkish knot. Now, if you go back to the next page, to your third page, it shows you exactly how the knots are woven. So what I've done here is I've made this little sample, which I will ask you to pass around. The top one is a symmetric. So each knot is wrapped around two warps, two warp strings. So um, the top one is symmetric, and the bottom of is asymmetric. One of the things that I found, the more tightly, the asymmetric knots allow more tightly woven rugs. So it allows you to be more intricate. The Turkish knot, which is called symmetric knot, you need a tool to use that. And then the asymmetric knot is tied by hand and then cut by a knife. Design. How are designs? The tribal people, most of the designs that they use is by memory. As children, they grow up, they see the designs. They're, 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 the rugs that they weave are typically coarser. They're not very intricate. They don't have a ton of colors. But they have, they're beautiful. They're, they're, they're like some of those tribal rugs. You see how it looks primitive? But it has a charm of its own. You know what I'm saying? To some people, love, I, I love it. And, and, and when you go to village and more city rugs, they have this thing, what's called, a, they use a grit paper. It's like what they call a cartoon. So the design is each, each dot here represents one hand-tied knot. So they count, depending on, before they make the rug, they decide how wide is it going to be, what's going to be the design, how many knots it's going to have. All of that is pre-premeditated, pre, uh, uh, pre and they, they put it together. Anyway, there's a cartoon. So what they have is the weavers can follow what the cartoon is, and then they can follow the design. Now, what happens is as, as it gets more, more complicated, the more so if, if you were to look at um, any rug that you see, if you look at this rug, it was woven one row at a time. So you can imagine how many times they have to change hands for each color that was changed. So it's very challenging to keep track of all of that. On bigger rugs, what they do is they don't design it like this. They may do a quarter of it. If it's symmetric, quarter symmetric, they may have a design for a quarter of it. And then they design and then they reflect it on the other way and, and, and they use it. This is a basic of how a rug is woven. Now we're getting to the challenging part of what is a weave. Every rug that's woven in Iran each region that weaves a rug, they have a signature. 
the, the weave is the, the knot formation from the back of the rug. So experts, when they look at something, they may be able to tell from the top what is, okay, that's a harese, but they actually have to look at the back to make sure how it's woven. There is a relationship, and I don't want to get it too complicated. There is a relationship between the size of the warp, how thick is it, it is, how thick is the knot, and how thick is the weft, and the distance between them. These combinations, it creates a knot pattern from the back, which is rather challenging to, to recognize. So when I first started in the business, uh, the gentleman I, I worked for, God bless him, he's in Atlanta, his name was Hamid. And I said, Hamid, what is that? He said, that's a cushion. And I say, how can you tell it's a cushion? He says, well, it's the, it's, it's the weave on the back. And I kept saying, I, I, don't, I don't see a weave on it. He said, just keep, keep looking at it, keep looking at it. What I finally realized, the challenge that I was having was that every rug that I saw from a cushion, they had the same weave, but each one had different designs. So looking at the design and the color was confusing me in how was it that it was different. So what I did, um, and I'm going to show you, I wove, I have woven about 80 different pieces with different uh, weaves from different regions, but using the same design. I took this design and I followed it for each weave that I'm going to show you in just a minute. But they're all different as you look. There's two two main types of weave. When a rug is woven, these are two warps. Each knot is tied around two warps. When the warps are lined flat, you see two nodes in the back. See that? Now, sometimes the warps are on top of each other. When the warps are on top of each other, you can only see one of these on the back. So here the warps, certain types of rugs, the warp is flat, laying flat, and these two represent one knot. So if you look at your third and fourth page, so you see where it says weave? If you look on the left, two nodes represents one knot. If you look at the, on the right, one node represents one knot. So this is like that, that's flat, and this is on top of each other. So, what I did was, I have made another loom, so you can see the difference. So, there are two main ones. What I call one end, which means you can only see one node. The other one is two end, where you can see two nodes. Now, those two basic things, all the rugs that are woven in the world, that's what they follow. That's what they have. Those are the basics that are there. Now, depending on where the rug is woven, they have different, the relationship that I was telling you about between the size of the warp, the thickness of it, the thickness of the knot, and the thickness of the warp and the distance, it creates a different pattern. I have woven these pieces on the, on the same loom, so same pattern, but if you notice, each one is different. I didn't throw it, did you notice that? <laughs> so if you look at the front, you can't tell what the weave is from the back. But when you look at the back, you see that it's different. Now, it takes some expertise, some learning to figure out where's where, and that's one of the things that I did with the book is I put the picture so that people can see the difference and see that, okay, a Kashan looks like that. So every rug that's made in the city of Kashan has the same weave. The patterns may change, colors will change, but the weave is the same. So for example, they use two, um, here when I showed you, I had one, one uh, weft going across. Sometimes they have two wefts. Sometimes they have three wefts. So Kashan uses two wefts. The first one is white. The second one is always blue. And the way they put it together, that proportion, every Kashan will look the same. By the way, there's a beautiful cushion that I actually repaired in, in, in the Houston Museum of Antiquity. I don't know if it's still there or not, but it's a beautiful cushion that's there. Uh, so, the book I made, it does three things. One is it shows you exactly how a rug is made. You can go to that website and free watch, because I, one of the things I want to do, I want to educate people. I'm, I'm hoping that through education, people will become more interested in rugs, and hopefully they will purchase more Persian rugs. Uh, 
I, I'm not a seller, so it doesn't matter. And, and the more that people buy, increases the demand. Hopefully that there will be more people that will get jobs uh, in Iran. And hopefully we can maybe save this industry. And sometimes I say this and I sound so proud. Sometimes I think it's so grandiose. I don't know. But all I know is that for the past three years, I have woken up every morning with a plan of what I'm going to do. And I just finished it three weeks ago. By the way, I need a job. So, <laughs> good. <laughs> so what I'm going to pass around is I want you to look. Try to figure out whether it's a one end, which means that only one node shows, or is it a two end. By the way, the fourth page, it actually shows the same thing, and it shows the difference, okay? And then I have it, the tag tells you exactly which region this was woven. So I wove these in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But what I did was I used the specs. I, I, I found rugs, I tore them apart, I measured them, and I used the same specs so that I would get the same weave. So each one of these that you look, is going to be different. If you, so you can pass this around. Yeah, here. Can I? God bless you. Let me take the napkin out. Okay. Thank you very much. So, so the crux of the matter is not necessarily about how rugs are woven. What what matters is what is the knot formation in the back, so that you can see the difference and to be able to recognize. So every rug woven in that region will have similar weave pattern on the back. Is it subtle? Sometimes, yes. So I'm not pretending to say that all of them you're going to be able to, you're going to walk out of here and recognize everything. But so for example, that pink one is called an Ushak in your hand, ma'am, Miss Lynn. That pink one, yeah, Ushak is very famous because they're, they're made in uh, Turkey and they have very light colors and coarse weave. Every Ushak that you look at it will have that weave on the back. It has a wool warp too. Yes, it does. Yeah, so that, that, that's what they use. Yes, I tried to use what they had. Now, I will tell you this. There were certain, like Turkmen's uh, that are made in north northeast of Iran, they use very tightly woven wool, very long staple wool. I didn't have access to it, so I used cotton. But the, the ratio was the same. So, so yeah, most of them, if I, if I could, I did exactly what they do. So some are going to be wool. So like Kazakh, which is a Caucasian, it's going to be wool. Are there any questions? Well, I'm feeling a difference in the density according to the difference in the weave. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I will tell you, all the wool that I've used, it's nice wool from England, but it's not Persian wool. I didn't have access to all of that. Uh, and, and, and again, the thickness, the, the thickness, the size of the knot, how closely the warps are, all of that makes a difference in how it feels. So there are rug experts, a lot of times, they feel the rug like this and tell you, oh yeah, that can't be from there or something like that. Yeah, this one's stiff. It is. So the, the, the idea again was that if your brain starts seeing the same pattern, design, it will begin to ignore the design and look for the knot formation. So all of these rugs have the same design, that. And as you begin to examine, it would take longer than 10 minutes here. But then you'll begin to see the formation of the knots that's different. It would really help to weave them and look at them to know the difference. Because, you know, having that experience of, of winding those knots around and knowing how they went in yes. would so, really help. So just for the sake of the microphone, just to repeat that, what you're saying is it would really be helpful to weave it, right? Guess how I did it. So what I didn't, I didn't weave. I haven't been in all of these places. I got samples, different samples from eBay, from different places, all torn up pieces, just a little sample. And what I did, I used the caliper and I measured exactly how thick was the warp, how many plies that it had, how thick was the weft and all of that. So I, my theory was if I do it exactly like they did, I should be able to get the same weave and sure enough, I did. Now, that's, truthfully, that's, that's how I, I figured it out. One question we get a lot from customers is, why are Persian rugs always red and blue? And you know, it's not always, but like 90% of the time, red is a very dominant color. It is a dominant. It's a color that they've used for a long time. I, I have to be honest with you, this sounds a little... But I, I think red does something to us psychologically. Some people believe the fact that it's 
it, it's the color of blood does something or something about it is exciting to us. So I think in, in contrast, I think that's why one of the reasons that they use it traditionally that they used it. And, and one of the, I'm glad you asked this question because one of the challenges that Persian rugs, the Iranians had was that when the, in, in the seventies, in the mid to late seventies, um, so, so as you well know, the, for those of you who are in fashion, like orange is in this year and then brown is in next year. So what they would do is the customers would come and say, well, I really want that shade of orange. So the wholesalers would go to the weavers in Iran and say, okay, we need orange. And what they said is, listen, man, this is how we've been weaving it for hundreds of years. We're not doing orange. This is the only color that we're doing. <laughs> so it was very interesting because at first, years ago, I thought, what a silly thing. And then somebody in India or Pakistan or China said, you bet you, we'll do anything you want. Um, that was part of their authenticity because they were not willing to, they weren't doing it to make money. They were doing it because it was the art, something I've done. My dad did it, my parents did it, whatever. And so, so that was also part of the, I don't want to say the demise, but that's part of the challenge was that other areas, not only were they willing to do the purple or the pink, the whatever you wanted, anytime you wanted, any size you wanted. The majority of Persian rugs, if not all of them, are one of a kind. Is the, does that also kind of speak to why there's not any, or any or many round Persian well, rugs? Right, yeah, because so all of these rectangle shapes are used because it's it's used in a room. Right. It's utilitarian. So what they have is they use it, they put it in as a carpet in a living room or something like that. So round rugs were not, they were not needed, so right. they hadn't. So they do it some. It's more challenging. But again, you, other countries are, will do any size, any shape that you like. Kate Vaughn, you may have said this, and I missed it, but when you were talking about the plant-based dyes and the chemical dyes, are the chemical dyes uh, more color fast than the plant ones, or are they similar? OK. Um, yes and no. If the vegetable dye is done well, if it's done properly, it's just, just as good. The challenge with, with chemical dye is that when you're using plant, by the way, that's one of the other reasons is what was accessible to be. There's a root called matter, M-A-D-D-E-R, that's, that's available, that gives the color, that's very e easy. And then there's a little bug, I, I can't remember what its name is. I'm sorry? Cochineal. Bless you. you, you want <laughs> Thank no, you. I was going to ask you. you if you use cochineal because most of the, the reds look like they're more from matter, but you can get them with cochineal and, and vice versa depending on. Yeah. So, so I wondered. Right. So no, no, I, I did not. I, I, I use chemical dyes. I'll be honest with you. I didn't use vegetable dyes. Um, so if it's done well, a, a vegetable dye is just as fat, color fast. Um, the, the challenge with the chemical dye is when you see the color red in a chemical dye or blue, it is 100% that red, 100% that blue. When you look at vegetable dyes, there are variations. So when you see a 100-year-old rug with, with vegetable dyes, part of the reason that there's a patina, there's different shades, is because over time, it fades a little bit differently here, it fades a little bit off there. But chemical dyes, it's all red, and if it's going to fade, they're all going to fade the same way. So um, there's positives on both sides good chemical, if, if chemical dyes are used properly, there many people are using chemical dyes, man. There's just, it's been around a long time. It's cheaper, it's faster, no pun intended. And, and so, you know. More uniform. It is more uniform. So, so if, for example, what's interesting is that if you're in India and you send a sample to the United States and say, I can make that rug any size that you want, you want to make sure that color looks the same. By the way, part of the challenge of going to any McDonald's and tasting the same thing, that's got to be scary somewhere. I don't know. That's something, uh, <laughs> right? There's got to be some chemical involved somewhere. I'm going to be sued. Um, Iranians like red. It's, uh, they use a lot of red. They use a lot of other colors also. But they're doing it because of what the tradition is, what they like, the patterns that they like. Um, on that website, there's about pictures of 400 Persian rugs that are in the market. You can just go look at them, just see the imagination, the creativity. Again, they're all one of a kind. And, and by the way, I want to make sure that 
if you have a handmade rug well done in India, Pakistan, or China, there's nothing wrong with it. It'll last a long time. It's beautiful. But one thing you will notice is that the difference between Persian rugs and Chinese rugs, if they took the same design, a Persian rug may have 12 to 15 colors. Maybe the Chinese will have seven or eight. They don't go all the way. They, they sort of go, it's more decorative than it is just authenticity of what it is. Can you explain the cost a little bit? Explain the cost? So, yeah, at, well, what, okay, okay. So, so for example, the beautiful question. So let's assume that uh, a nine by 12, nine foot by t uh, 12 foot rug, let's say on average, it has average density of 100 knots per square inch. Um, it's gonna have about one and a half million knots. Two people are working on it, average of 400 knots a day. It's gonna take about 3,600 hours. By the way, I'm not that smart, I actually did this uh, recently. 3,600, so, so it, it, it could take six to nine months for two people to make it, okay? So first you have the cost of the materials, people sit in there, then somebody makes an Iran, they, you know, they, 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 they sell it to a wholesaler, then it gets shipped, all of that. So um, Persian rugs are more expensive. They're one of a kind. Uh, there's more work put into them. The material is a high, you know, better quality. Uh, pound for pound, Persian rugs are gonna be a little more expensive than something that you see in China. Uh, they, um, I want to be very careful. I don't want to misrepresent in any way. Um, the mass-produced drugs are going to be cheaper because they're people that come in, and that's all they're doing all day. They just weave in, and that's it. And they, they do it at very cheap rates in places like China or India and all of that. Um, then, of course, you have the machine-made drugs. But what's interesting to me is that you don't have to pay a lot more. So uh, I, th I think a Karistan, a, a nice quality Karistan 9 by 12 is like four or 5,000 dollars. Am I saying that correctly or not? I, I, it's not? It's not cheap. You don't have to spend that much more to get a nice handmade rug. The best thing you need to know about the cost is to go to a place where you can trust the people, like people here at Rug Rack, because you won't know the difference. You have, you have to trust the people. You, there's no way that you'll be able to gain enough. When I wanted to buy a diamond for my wife, so I went on the internet and man, I had a VS1 and VS2 and I was all of this and they were showing me these things with the magnifying glass. Oh yeah, I see it. I had no clue. I ended up going somewhere where somebody said, listen, I think Lisa's diamonds. This is, you can trust this lady, she's gonna treat you right. I went there and I bought it. I think I got a good deal and that's the end of it. So, Know the people you're going to. I think that'll be the best thing that you can do. And then you can shop around and see what you want to have a budget in mind. And I would highly recommend for those of you who are going to buy a rug, if you have an opportunity to buy the rug first, fall in love with the rug first, then you can put the colors together. If you have the colors in mind and you want to go find a rug that not only has those colors, but also you love the pattern and design, you really are limiting yourself. You can shoot me any time if I'm saying something I no, shouldn't be No, that is saying. exactly what we preach. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Amen. If you, work, if you start with the rug, then it makes it a lot easier to narrow things. Other right, things because there down. are a lot more shades of yeah. wallpaper, whatever, you know, all of that. Whether it's a Persian hand-knotted rug or a Machi five ninety-nine yeah, machine-made rug. Absolutely. Absolute. Yes, ma'am. So I was wondering maybe on the tribal rugs or something, did they spin the, the yarn by hand? They do, that's an excellent question. So, so I, I, I told you about tribal rugs. The, the question was, was the material spun by hand uh, for the tribal rugs for sure? Now, um, when I speak, I, I have to be careful. I haven't been there in the past 30 years, so there's no way that I can say that there's been no tribes that actually bought some, but tribal, people, they actually do everything them, themselves. They spin the yarn, they have the sheep, they spin the yarn, they dye it, they use all of that stuff. That's why, for example, they don't have a lot of variation of colors. They don't do 20 different colors. Um, villagers, they actually buy. So a family that's doing it, they could spin themselves, but it's probably cheaper to go buy somebody else. Now, when you go to city, 
They actually have people that spin the yarn. They have different people that dye the yarn. They have different people that actually warp the loom. They come in, they're experts that warp that because this is a tiny little thing and I'm so proud of doing it. It doesn't, that's no effort. You try to do a nine by 12 and try to keep it even, Lord help you. Um, so, and then they have the design. Somebody actually does the designs. They're famous people that all they do is designs, do the colors and all of that. And then they have weavers that come in, experts that they come in. And then sometimes this uh, it actually works that way. So when they have bigger rugs, they have someone that actually sings the patterns. So as they're doing it, the ladies are doing it, instead of having to keep looking at the piece of paper, somebody's saying two reds, one blue, whatever, whatever that they do. So. That means everybody has to <coughs> go at a similar rate if you've got more than one yeah, person Yeah, everybody on the has road. to go at a similar rate. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And, and they, they, they work together. They know, they know what they're doing. I'm, they've been doing it for a long time, and they could do it in their sleep. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that so that I wanted it to stand out a little bit. Okay, now there are some rugs. You can't see the yeah, if I shove them all together, then they, they see. You see how those two are together on the on the left. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure you understood. If if I woven tightly, it may have been difficult for you to see. But there are some that there's a little space, so that's not unique. But you really have to have an eye for it then. This 20 minutes is not going to do it. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, it's going to, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I worked, six, it took me six months to figure out what a Kashan looks like. But once you, do, but I didn't know what to look for. So, so what I'm trying to do is, so it, part of the book that I did was I have woven, the, I, I've woven about 80 pieces. That's, that's half of it. And then I show the same design, keep looking. So as you repetitively look at it, then you start look, instead of looking at the color and design, you look at the knot formation. And once you see that, do you remember the magic eye? Have you seen that magic eye thing? The, the little, there's a piece of flat paper you look at it and then all of a sudden eventually you see the three dimensional thing. It's that once you see it, it's ah. So do they knot the ones in um, India and China differently? Well, what they do is, no, there are two major types of knots. What I've shown, uh, are they different? The question was, are they different? The, the knots in India and, and Pakistan and China are different. No, they're doing the same thing. I will tell you, though, I've seen Chinese rugs that were just a loop. They do it very fast. Yeah, it's just a loop and they cut it. Now, does that mean the There's some Turkish knots that are a little different, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a Turkish knot, there's a Spanish knot, but the majority, the, the main knots are the, 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 the symmetric and asymmetric. I have seen, well, you know, that, like I saw a very tightly woven rug, and then when you look at it, it's, it's they've done it differently. Did you have a question? Oh, yeah, what, yes, is, your, what is your book called? It's on top of that page. Yeah, it's an e-book. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it is, it's 1,200 pages. And my children are hungry. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a roof over our head. <laughs> I've rented this suit. <laughs> so it looks like with the asymmetric knot, naturally it keeps the warps side by side, but the asymmetric knot helps to pull the warp front and back and also it's set closer together yes but that so, so that's how you're able to keep them sound on top of each other yes. yes so so for for the microphone the 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 way that the symmetric knot works it kind of keeps the warps separated right uh the way that the the asymmetric knot works which is the persian knot it actually allows, it puts less pressure on one of the warps, which allows it to easier go like that. So that's why the majority of the really, really finely, finely woven knot quality, I'm talking about intricate rugs, are asymmetric, okay? But there are places where they use the symmetric, like Tabriz. Tabriz uses the symmetric knot and they weave very fine rugs. Fine meaning that they're intricate, tightly woven rugs. So it does make a difference. And that's one of the things I explain in the book, that it, it makes a difference. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you walk away with some knowledge. Um, uh, 
really being from Iran, this is, this is a culture that which, what's portrayed, unfortunately, what you see on TV is not the culture, it's not the people. Uh, the rug weaving has been a tradition that's been around for thousands of years and hopefully will continue. I want to thank Miriam and Katie for, for, for having us here today at the Rug Rack and hopefully we'll see some of these folks back, right? Thank you for coming.